for many of us guys, we are willing to put up with the health problems because we think it's just about us. Look, I have belly fat. It's not a big deal. I'm over the days of wanting to look good. Yeah, I know my heart's bad. It's okay. You know, my dad had a heart attack. I'll probably have one too. Or I'm over the hill. And these are things that guys say because they think they're thinking from a selfish vantage point that this vehicle is about me. So first off, we're starting to see that it's really about more. It's about your values. Mm -hmm. But on an even deeper level, it's that we have Holy Spirit within us. This is a temple. And truly, the things that we do with this body are a reflection and a relationship with God. Hey, sons, welcome back to the Being Sons podcast. I'm Jay Heck, and that is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. He is the founder of the Fit Father Project, and I was introduced to him through a Google search engine. I'm 50 years old now, and three years ago, I finally got sick enough with how my body was not responding to exercise and feeling sluggish and inflexible and tight that I went to Google and I said, how does a man over 40 stay fit? I asked the question and that's how God introduced me to our guest, Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been working a program that he got me started on several years ago. It, it works to this day. You know, here I am 50 and it's really benefited me. Uh, but when I first looked at his website, it, it, it was not easily distinguishable from a lot of the other websites that promise you great results and health. But when I had this interview with him, I asked his permission to record a simple conversation and I was really curious because there were hints, strong hints throughout his website and through the testimonies. This, this was a man that um, had really got at the center of, of a lot of his thinking and a lot of his beliefs. And so I was deeply surprised that over the course of this interview, he was so eager to come out with how deeply uh, his faith has impacted his story and how he brings it into his ministry to help men in their 40s, those of us who are getting wiser, um, but whose bodies are not keeping up with our brains, to really stay in the game. So I'm very excited to offer this to you because this is a man who has truly, uh, through his ministry of fitness, helped me out in many, many ways, helped me stay close to my, my kids, has helped me continue doing with a lot of energy and with a lot of hope the job that I love doing, which requires that I go and I adventure. I get out there and I do things. So without any further hesitation, here is the interview that I have with Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, founder of the Fit Father Project. Hope you enjoy. Doctor, thank you for being on, on with us. Uh, I'm really glad you're here. So would you just tell us about you and your program and your story? Yeah. First off, um, I said this to you before we started this call. I am truly grateful you found us and that you worked the program and it worked for you like so many guys. Um, and for me, although we run a business and we take people's credit cards and we have a paid program, this didn't start out as a business for me. It started out as, uh, as really a family thing because growing up, I watched my own dad do what so many guys do, and that is work himself to the bone to take care of me, my mom, my little brother. Um, you know, He was doing the best he could to put food on the table, provide for our family. He would work such long hours, sleep at the office, so much time that he stopped eating healthy, stopped exercising, and I saw his body deteriorate. Um, and he eventually got so sick that he died at 42 years young, midpoint of his life. I was nine years old at the time, and my little brother was six, and it completely just devastated our family. And my dad died in June, and my birthday is in July. So this was a couple weeks after my dad died. Um, and on my 10th birthday, my mom gifted me a pair of my dad's dumbbells. And I remember blowing out those birthday candles and making a promise. And that promise was that in my 10 year old mind, I was going to figure out how to get my body healthy so that I wouldn't get sick like dad. So that I could be the man to take care of my mom, my little brother. 
And I learned a very, very clear lesson from a young age, which in retrospect now has been a massive gift that I get to share with men all around the world. And that's that as guys, health is the foundation of everything we love. It's the foundation of our ability to spend time here in God's material created universe, to have this body vessel in good condition so that we can interact with the world, do meaningful work, be of service, see our kids and our grandkids grow up. And I saw my dad lose all of that because he didn't see the big picture. He didn't see health as foundational. He saw it as something that he could keep on the side. And he saw the rest of his life responsibilities here and health on the other here. And because he had that mentality, he put it on the back burner and it ultimately cost him his life. And my dad had a beautiful heart. He's doing the best he could. But I think now with so many of us who we've seen our parents go through health struggles, maybe they're currently going through health struggles, heart disease, Alzheimer's, we know what the path is like. So it's a little different now. We know where things can potentially head. So now we have an opportunity, an opportunity to change and to reinvent. And it's not done through traditional diets or P90X style workout programs. Obviously eating and exercise is important. And I'd love to talk about some of the strategies we have at the Fit Follower Project today on this call. Um, but it's really about a whole mindset and heart set shift about how we relate to our health and fitness. And because the people listening to this are spiritually minded like you and I um, and spiritually hearted, I would like to talk about this conversation of health um, on many different levels. And this is the kind of stuff that we do on our program that we've been blessed to have helped over 20,000 guys in their 40s in a hundred countries around the world lose well over 250,000 pounds. We don't even keep wow. track past this point. Wow. Um, it's, it's because not just because of our methods of our eating and our exercise, but because of these other components that Jay, you've directly experienced. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we do in our programs that I think is very important and, and you did this as well, Jay is before you actually start the eating and exercise program, we have guys go through a reflective mission statement process where we have you do some reflection in your life on how your current behaviors around your health are impacting every other area of your life. How is the way you're eating? How is the way you're moving or lack thereof? What you're drinking, how well you're sleeping, what your stress level is that? How is that affecting your ability to be a good parent? Mm -hmm. How is it affecting your work? How is it affecting your connection with God? And we, have, we start to build these bridges between what, what our values are, family, God, productivity, service in the world, and start to build a link in like how we actually manage this body vessel, how those things are connected. And then we do a little bit of future pacing. We're like, okay, so if we continue these behaviors for 10 to 15 years, mm -hmm. where, do we, where are we going to end up? Mm -hmm. And if we change today, where are we going to end up? And ultimately, this exercise culminates in a mission statement where guys are committing to 30 days. In the next 30 days, I'm going to make these simple changes to my eating, to my exercise, to my sleep. And I understand that's going to take a cost, the investment of my time, my energy, the investment of some of my willpower in making different choices. Maybe I got to buy some foods and ingredient, different ingredients for a protein shake here and there. You make this investment and you understand that now it's worth the cost. That is something that helps men expand out the idea of what health is and how it relates to their values. That it's not something that can be put on the back burner because it's foundational. But let's actually take a step back and discuss this even on a more spiritual and metaphysical level. We are all here experiencing God's created universe. And no matter where we go, we have this body vehicle. And I, I'll actually, I would love to quote something that used to be on the original Fit Father website that's no longer there, but um, it's 1 Corinthians uh, 6 19, um, which is basically, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, yeah. um, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? And I think that last bit of that verse is very telling, too, because for many of us guys, we are willing to put up with the health problems because we think it's just about us. Look, I have belly fat. It's not a big deal. I'm over the days of wanting to look good. Yeah, I know my heart's bad. It's okay. You know, my dad had a heart attack. I'll probably have one too, or I'm over the hill. And these are things that guys say because they think they're thinking from a selfish 
vantage point that this vehicle is about me. So first off, we're starting to see that it's really about more. It's about your values. Mm -hmm. But on an even deeper level, it's that we have Holy Spirit within us. This is a temple. And truly, the things that we do with this body are a reflection and a relationship with God. Insofar as we maybe go out and view our families as, as temples where we can serve um, and, and praise God and live a virtuous life, the same, it's like a fractal relationship. The same thing happens with our bodies. The choices, when we choose goodness, when we choose to put the right things into our body that nourish us, it's a, almost like a form of physical prayer in a way. Um, and what ends up happening too is when this body vehicle gets healthier, when we start to do the natural behaviors that this body was designed to do, which is drink clean water, breathe deeply, move your body in some way every single day and eat foods that are mostly non-processed. When we do these things that are like the foundational stuff that this body uh, requires, we start to feel tremendously better on all levels. Physically, obviously we see changes. We see fat loss, we feel more energy. Mentally, it's important to understand that our mental clarity and our energy that we have in our body, you know, we, 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 a lot of us think about our, ourselves as located in our heads in this kind of like mind idea. Well, our brains on a physical level are basically floating around in a neurochemical soup. When people are depressed, they get antidepressant medications from some doctors. And what those medications do is alter different levels of these chemicals, these neurotransmitters in the brain. Well, guess what? Our body builds these neurotransmitters from food from actual sunlight hitting our eyes causes a cascade of hormones, from exercise causes our bodies to release certain things. So we are actually making changes on this neurochemical level. So after you get healthy, you start to have greater clarity of mind. Your mood starts to improve, which impacts how joyful you feel throughout the day, which has a cascade effect probably to the kind of choices you make um, in you know living in the light or turning into sin. Mm, All this stuff sure. is interconnected. There's yeah. nothing that we ever do that's not holistic when we really zoom out and see all the interconnected pieces. Um, and so from there, especially as men of faith listening to this, what we do has a truly cosmic significance, like a spiritual significance. And the beautiful thing is it, it now comes down to us making choices every single day and choosing the higher as opposed to the lower, which is no different than if we're in a situation where we could lie, cheat, or steal, and we choose to not do those things because mm -hmm. it's aligned with our values. We're mm -hmm. just operating on the domain of the basic building blocks of this body, which is food, you know, sleep, water, and movement. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll pause there for a second, and I, and I want to get into some more tactical stuff and less metaphysical stuff, but I want to give you a, a moment to comment on that and just kind of let that sink in, because I think when you are able to expand your perspective on what this, this thing is, and also have hope, knowing that is possible for guys who are in worse shape than you, who got back in shape, when you have those two elements, one, it's incredibly important, two, it's possible, then you have hope, and then you can walk the path. Right. Yes. You know, one of the things that uh, everybody in our culture and, you know, we live in the United States, it may be worse here than it is in other places around the world, but there's just this sense that we have a capacity uh, of things in our lives that we can do and we're carrying a load that exceeds our capacity, right? So we're, yeah. we're, we're actually operating from morning till evening deprived. We're typically not getting enough sleep. And it's just kind of that sense that I'm behind on everything. And I'm using words that have been passed on, wisdom that's been passed on to me from other friends to help me gain a sense of perspective. But when, you're, when you're, your load exceeds your capacity and you're offered an opportunity to um, make an improvement, to make a shift, it could be a two degree shift mm -hmm. in your life. Um, you know, you wake up every day and like, what am I going to invest in? I think you're making a case here, which, which I would say is, is a really good case that you could take that extra time. So let's just say that a man's got 30 minutes in a day that he could say, okay, this is disposable time. I can spend it with my kids. I can spend it watching TV. I can spend it drinking a beer. All of them may bring a sense of relief, but what I have found and I'd like for you to just comment on this is that um, I believe for you to take care of your body, to take half an hour 
And even if it means that you're going to leave your kids inside the house watching TV or you're not going to do something with them, at least in the short term, to begin investing in yourself when you've overlooked your physical body for a long time is actually an incredible investment. Mm -hmm. It may feel really risky because my wife may feel like I'm being selfish in the garage with my dumbbells. My kids may have needs. Um, what I have found personally is that that 30 to 45 minutes that I spend by myself is actually a really good investment. And that was one of the early things that was hard for me to get over is just feeling that this is selfish for me to do this for myself. It is selfish for me to order a protein shake, you know, at, I don't even remember how much it was cause I don't even care anymore, but um, yeah. I think a lot of guys just don't think that they're worth it. I think you tapped on that a little bit, but what you're introducing men into uh, here is the idea that taking care of your physical bodies is actually one of the most profound and spiritual investments that you can make. So thank you for making that. And if you want to add anything else to I, that. I do. I think it's such a great point I, I, on capacity and load. The beautiful thing is that no matter what you do throughout the day, the work you have, your responsibilities, the quality of the energy that you bring and how the stamina that you have is directly influenced by the food you eat, the sleep you get, how this body functions. So when you do get healthier, your capacity increases, which means the load that was once heavy now becomes manageable. That's the truth. Your productivity increases as you get healthy, your brain gets sharper, memory improves, energy improves, you don't feel that crashed in the middle of the day. So that's very helpful. Two, I think one thing that we do uniquely well with the Fit Father Project, and I wanna talk about some of our methods in a little bit, um, is, is the metaphor that when it comes to your health and fitness, there's little hinges that swing big doors. So mm -hmm. there are small things like a 30 minute workout, even three times per week, 90 minutes per week of exercise is enough to make a massive change to your energy, to your weight loss, your fitness. If you can yes. get it to 30 minutes a day, incredible. But like a lot of our guys legitimately, we've had men lose over a hundred pounds without touching a dumbbell or a treadmill. They follow the nutrition plan, they walk every single day, they drink their water, and they try to get that extra 30 minutes of sleep. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing is when it comes to getting this body healthier, um, time, if you have the right methods, doesn't have to be a huge barrier because that is the biggest hurdle for so many of us living in Western countries is we're so busy all the time, so we have to like, oh my God, I couldn't think about spending any more time right. because I already feel so time, time tapped already. So the nice news is that it doesn't have to take a lot of time. And quite frankly, I'll say this, as long as you're moving your body every single day, like a daily walk, you know, just playing, walking, move, walking to your dog, moving your kids, you don't even have to do formal exercise to see results. You can literally just modify your eating and your sleep and your hydration. Mm -hmm. um, and the way we like to teach nutrition, I think actually saves you time and makes things more streamlined. So we'll get mm -hmm. into that mm -hmm. as well. The other thing is on, on the, the front, I, I, I have yet to meet one of our 20,000 program members who has gone through a transformation whose family at the end of it has not been ecstatic in saying that this was an incredible decision because what actually happens is even, yes, there may be some initial resistance in some families, like for sure. Everyone's got a kind of different family situation and setup, but when you start producing changes and your kids watch you and they're sponges. So they're learning from you, their habits, their mindsets. They're proud of you because you're moving forward and now you're strong dad instead of big dad. Yes. You know, yes. and your wife is absolutely going to be invigorated and turned on by the fact that this is a man who's taking charge of his destiny, very masculine energy and making improvements, looking better, feeling better, and maybe she may even be encouraged to move forward with her fitness too. And ultimately, what this can create is a culture of health in your family, which may have a ripple effect that lasts generations. Yeah. Because it's the truth. You know, people who have parents who have had heart attacks early often have heart attacks early. This stuff perpetuates on both sides of the equation. Um, and Jay, I know you mentioned this too, that you had a, a, a profound impact of the pride that you kind of you feel like the good pride you feel because you know your kids are proud of you you know yeah, yeah. that you made this this change yes 
Yeah, absolutely. I can, I can sense it. You know, I, when I'm working out in my garage with the door open, that's just kind of my happy place. And I've created a space to be able to do that. Um, and my kids are out playing, you know, riding skateboards, bikes, everything. And I'm in there working out. Um, there, there's a, there's a spirit of life that I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, but it even goes beyond my, my, my initial kids, though my son has made comments about it and I've overheard him making comments to his friends about it. And his friends have made comments, your dad rides skateboards and your dad will do this and he'll do these things with you, which are possible because of fitness. But I've even got neighbors across the street that have been watching and I will go and share with them and point them to the fit father project. And I get to walk over and help them do the apex 10 and, and to be able to talk with their entire family about how it's been benefiting them and the wife of the neighbor, you know, he hasn't paid you a dime. It's just that it, it gives me an opportunity to love on another man by sharing that with him. But, but yeah, there is, I just feel better and I feel like I'm going to live longer and be able to do what God created me to do longer and better, you know? And it is the truth. I think let's, let's chat about that longevity piece a little bit. These, these bodies have natural lifespans that are that far exceed what most people uh, realize. Average age of death with uh, medication that's extending that is probably around 76 here in the United States, maybe a little bit older. And this is people on multiple blood pressure, cholesterol medications, many people listening to this right now. Mm-hmm. The good news is that you can be healthy into your 80s, 90s, even early 100s. I mean, the, the, there, are, there, are, there are cultures of centenarians around the world, pockets of longevity where people regularly live to 100 with sharp minds. And so for as men who are called to serve and to make an impact, what's another 10, 15, 20 years of, of time here worth? Not just selfishly for us, but just like, our ability to interact with God's world, to, to lead our communities, to help people steer people in the right direction, to be of service. I mean, that's absolutely an incredible amount of time. Um, and you can be healthy. One of my inspirations and mentors was Jack LaLanne growing up. He died at 96. He was one of the original fitness juicer guys. And he was mm-hmm. like pulling boats and doing push-ups into his 90s. So mm-hmm. the opportunity is really fantastic. And I'll tell you this too. We have so many guys who literally started exercising in their 40s and even 50s um, and like started exercising. Literally, we're yeah. not even athletic in middle school. We're overweight, low confidence that now have six pack abs and are running marathons. So it really is never too late. Yeah. Um, but there needs to be a choice. There needs to be uh, this deep alignment and commitment because that's what's going to keep you on track. And that's hopefully we've painted the bigger picture. Now, I'd like to talk about some of our methods, if you don't mind, Jay, like some of the more specifics that like the the nuts and bolts behind the recipe, the secret sauce of how our approach works. We talked about some of the mission statement stuff, but I think one of the most, the two cha- most challenging things for most guys, I would say 2.5 would be one, nutrition. There's a lot of temptations, a lot of bad food, a lot of bad habits. We need to figure out something, a nutrition plan that's sustainable, Mm -hmm. that doesn't leave us starving all the time, that's not so complicated that it actually fits into our schedule, and one that we actually enjoy. Because if it's like a low carb, never eat a thing again diet, it's just like it's kind of pointless. You know, we're going to lose 10 pounds, regain 15. We've all been there. Two, exercise has to be time efficient. And three, we need to build this kind of healthy routine relationship to probably getting a little more sleep and restoration time. Those are like probably the three big things. And I'll start with nutrition because I think if anyone can just take a couple things from this um, to start applying a strategy into their life um, to see results, it is nutrition. When it comes to weight loss, nutrition likely drives 75, 80% 80 of the results. And it's just because if you look at the, just clearly from a mathematical standpoint, Um, you know, you have a medium fry from McDonald's, 700 calories, that's over an hour on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so it's like you start to do some math and you're like, man, if I can just start to make some healthier choices on the food front side of things and I still enjoy it, I don't need to go uh, operate in this old model of needing to spend lots of time doing cardio to exercise off calories because we just don't have the time for that. So the number one thing we do before we even talk about foods with the Fit Father Project is we talk about meal timing setups. Because one of the biggest issues for men is that nutrition is a reactive thing. It's not proactive. 
It's I didn't plan healthy food, so snacks are here, or I'm driving and I'm hungry on the way home from work, so I stopped at the fast food, or we didn't have this and I'm stressed at night, so I'm eating the chips or the ice cream. So if we can actually install a proactive structure that takes the thinking out of it and enables just to kind of follow the path, meaning we exert less willpower, less decision fatigue, and we just have some standardization, it makes right. things a lot easier. So yes. first thing we do, we give guys like five different meal timing setups. There are different times. Some might be something like you have your like the four by four plan, uh, or as we call like the on the go plan, which is your breakfast sometime around seven, eight, mm -hmm. lunch around noon, a snack around three, dinner around seven. Very standard. A lot of people have that breakfast, lunch, dinner with that little afternoon mini meal, so you don't go into dinner starving. That's fine. Other guys like to do intermittent fasting, where they skip that first meal at breakfast and they kind of fast until uh, eleven, twelve. They have that late breakfast, early lunch snack around three, dinner at six or seven. We have even, you know, plans for, for like we have a lot of firefighters and cops and people who work the night shift, third shift, drivers, truckers. Um, those guys oftentimes need a unique meal timing setup, but we got to find one that fits you because ultimately if you try to find, you follow like Joe Schmo's diet and it's, it's designed for his schedule, there's going to be friction from day one. So we got to find something that you're like, yeah, that's doable. That fits my schedule. I'm available at these times, X, Y, Z. So we get that dialed in. Um, the next thing we do is we like to standardize the first few meals of the day, breakfast, lunch in particular, and probably your snack. We want this balance when it comes to nutrition between standardization because we don't have to think about it and flexibility because variety is the spice of life and we don't want to feel like we're robots with food because food is enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, and the solution that we think is best is to leave some of the variety for dinners and to standardize the first few meals in the day. So we have, with our breakfast recipes, we have guys eat some of these egg recipes or have some of our fat burning shakes. The reason that's so effective is because these would take less than 10 minutes to make, they taste great, they keep you full until lunch, your energy level is really good, and it's dialed in. So when you get up in the morning, you're not starting your day off with, I have to make another decision about how to get healthy food, and it's boom, automatic, this is my nutrition for the day. And we load these, our like protein powders and all the stuff we have, with so many like vitamins and minerals and micronutrients that you're almost like all the good stuff in early in the day and you're kind of like have the energy throughout the middle of the day. For lunch, we have simple recipes. We have guys eat sandwiches. Yes, we have better kinds of bread than normally and you can get them at your local supermarket. Sometimes it's salads, like simple recipes, shakes, right. salads, uh, sandwiches, even even if you are eating fast food for lunch, you know, we give you options at like 20, 30 different fast food places, but point being it's standardized. Mm -hmm. We make these things really regimented. You have a go-to snack in the afternoon because a big mistake guys do have is they may have lunch at noon and they don't eat something until maybe dinner at six or seven, or, and then they find they're reactively snacking, having sodas or coffee for a pick me up in the afternoon, or they go into dinner starving and they eat 1500 calories because they didn't proactively plan. So if we can just get these little guideposts installed throughout your day, you now have a system, a system that kind of guides you through. Um, and then dinner is a little more flexible. We teach lots of concepts like perfect plates, but basically we have you pick what are your favorite healthy foods. You like chicken, you like fish, you like steak, you like turkey, you're plant-based, whatever that is, you pick your favorite proteins, your favorite vegetables, your favorite carbs, and you kind of combine them together. Mm -hmm. You can have everything without feeling restricted. Like our guys, again, lose weight, eating bread having rice, having sweet potatoes, eating right. fruit, like you're not restricted as long as you're smart about the portions. And we basically help make that um, as mindless as possible. That's why we call it like the fit father, no think meal plan. Because when it comes to nutrition, we want it to feel relatively automatic. And we also say, hey, you can do free meals. Like people call them cheat days, but we're like, this is part of the plan. Like proactively, you plan it ahead of time. This day, I know I'm going out with family and friends. I'm going to have a couple slices of pizza. That's part of the plan. It's planned in. Right. And you are weighing yourself on a regular intervals so that you have these feedback loops. Mm -hmm. So it's not rocket science, but it is designed with sustainability and you in the forefront, like what works for you on the nutrition side. And on the exercise side of things, um, it's important to understand this, that there is a hierarchy of needs for the body when it comes to health. The first two, in my opinion, are sleep, because this is this restorative phase. These bodies require sleep, you know, and it's almost like a, I love 
I love these kind of overarching spiritual metaphors, but we have a day and we have a night. This is the design of this created universe and our bodies have an active time and a restorative time. And these two things need to be balanced completely. And sleep is so essential for all of our fat burning hormones, helping regenerate our organs. We release all that anti-aging growth hormone at night. So getting, improving the quality of our sleep, it doesn't necessarily mean like you have to spend two more hours that you don't have sleeping, but if you can even improve the quality of that sleep, bump it up by 30 minutes. And when you're exercising, you actually sleep better and you're eating mm -hmm. better, you actually sleep better anyways. Yes. You're not waking up at night all the time. Um, but quality sleep with this whole mindset, spirit set piece that we talked about is foundational. Then it comes to healthy eating. Then it comes to daily movement, which is different than formal exercise. We pride ourselves for having really amazing workouts at the Fit Father Project, but it's more important for me to share this with you that if someone listening to this, you feel like you have absolutely no time and you can just start to eat healthier following. We have like a bunch of free meal plans and stuff you can check out too. And obviously we have our full Fit Father program. But if you can start to eat healthier and walk for like 30 minutes a day, you will start losing weight and feeling better. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are meant to move. Um, the people that live to 100 in these centenarian cultures, they don't have P90X, but they're farming, they're walking up hills, they're doing these kinds of things. Now, when it comes to our workout philosophy, we believe that men over 40 need to train in a very specific way. And we call it metabolic resistance training. And what this is, is a combination of strength training, um, you know, good exercises that are like rows, squats, push-ups, but we make them joint friendly because what you absolutely don't want to do is be beating up old shoulders, old knees, old low back right. with stuff that's going to bury you in a hole. So it's got to be joint friendly modifications of these exercises in a circuit fashion of sorts, meaning there's low rest in between. So you're getting this cardio fat burning effect with this muscle building effect and the workouts can be done in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You're starting off, they may take 45, but you will gain your fitness incredibly fast. And these workouts give you a metabolic boost for 24 hours at least. So this is the new perspective on exercise. If you pulse these workouts throughout the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you can commit to like three 30 minute workouts, you schedule them like meetings, you get a metabolic boost. You train on Monday, you have a boost on Tuesday. You train on Wednesday, you have a boost through Thursday. You train on Friday, you have a boost through the weekend. You have a younger metabolism because you've invested in these little pulses throughout the week. Um, and that is a much more sustainable way to train. And the workouts are, they're challenging. And they'll give you a sense of accomplishment when you yes. do them and yes. your fitness will improve dramatically quickly. And all you need is a pair of dumbbells and kettlebells and literally mm -hmm. around five to 10 feet of floor space. So mm -hmm. location is not an issue. You could do it in the morning. You could do it before dinner. You could do it after dinner. You could just get it in. And then the other, I think, component that's, that's so huge to our method is the brotherhood and camaraderie. We put you in our groups with other program members. You guys are sharing their stories. You're talking with me and my team. Um, and we're, we're just like real men all walking the same path together and the camaraderie is essential. It's why the same thing happens with what is, what is a congregation, a church, a, a podcast around faith. It's, it's men and women coming together, um, because they share common values of improvement. So we use this, we don't, we're not reinventing the wheel here. It's like, it's a church setting. You know, we have everyone coming in here, being vulnerable, sharing, looking to improve, in these groups posting some guys post some guys just watch posts but it creates a culture of encouragement and celebration um, and talking about real stuff because things with this fitness stuff it's not like it's constant linear progress it's mm -hmm. two steps forward one step plateau one step back three steps forward it's a constant improvement and course correct but we we believe we have a sustainable method and it makes me so happy to hear that you've been 18 months strong on yours and it's mm -hmm. just another testament to the fact that this stuff does work Mm hmm. And I'll, I am a, a lifelong member. I took advantage of that program. Um, uh, monthly, I get, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the fitness powder, the protein powder. That's nice. been a great decision. You yeah. really talked to me. I was because I'd wake up in the morning and, you know, I'm always in the mood for a piece of, of toast or an English muffin or uh -huh. You know, I don't know, eggs, that's fine. But this is so simple. And I just pack it full of, uh, I make a smoothie out of it with kale and uh, spinach. And then I'll put cacao powder and some other things. And it actually tastes fabulous. It's the best mm -hmm. thing that I 
uh, have probably ever had for breakfast and I crave it in the morning when I don't have it. I try and wait till 11 o'clock, you know, until I really begin to get hungry. But, um, cause I don't want to fill my body with, um, with stuff it doesn't need. Uh, yeah. And I try and work out in the morning before I will take it so that I'm Perfect. burning more fat. Yeah. Can't always make it that way, but, um, uh, it tastes fantastic. And when you see all the stuff that you're putting in there, you're going, this is the healthiest meal that I will eat all day. Undoubtedly. 100%. Absolutely. And it tastes phenomenal. And I've given it to a buddy of mine. He's one of the other guys that uh, Rich Pantusa, who I, who I normally host this podcast with, um, he loves it. And I gave it to my mom and she loved it and she ordered it from you. So everybody who I let taste it, my neighbor across the street, I gave him, you know, a quarter of a can to encourage him and they all, they all love it. The other thing that really made this accessible for me and it has allowed me to do it for 18 months is the fact that you said, you can eat rice, you can eat bread, here's some alternatives, because I realized that in the past when I am robbed of those things, uh, I can go for 30 days but then after that i am just emotionally craving those yeah. things again and i go back to them and then it kind of fuels that shame cycle that totally. look at all that i did and then now look all it takes is day one and i'm failing again also something that's really sacred to me is our family loves making pizzas once a week it's just part of the the routine and it's just a sacred time for us to all pull pizzas out. Now I go with the live grain nice. uh, bread, which is much better. And I actually love them, but we all make them together as a family. We all put them in the oven together. We all sit down and we eat. And it's something that I know when my kids are off to college, we will look back on as some of our favorite memories is just that time in the kitchen together. And, you know, this, this has made that possible. Um, Seeing a higher metabolism, being able to work out with a couple of dumbbells and not needing a ton of equipment in my garage while I listen to a podcast and between reps, I can, like what I do is I clean up my garage. Like I can look <laughs> around my garage and I'm like, okay, I'm going to need to put those boxes away. I'm going to need to cut that thing up. Like I know that over the 30 to 45 minutes, by the end of it, I'm going to feel great. I'm going to be sweating like crazy. I'm going to walk back in the house. I'm going to smell really bad. And I'm actually going to enjoy the reaction of my daughter and my wife who are like, Ooh, get away from me. You're all sweaty <laughs> right now. But to know that, um, they're really proud of that. And I'm going to have a clean garage at the end of it. My son's proud of me. I'm setting a good example for him. Um, the sleep has been like every aspect of what you share. It just makes sense. That's the thing. It makes sense and it's doable long term. And so I've been doing it for 18 months and I don't think I've ever tried anything physically to better myself that's lasted more than about two months. So, and I, and what I foresee now is that a lot of the fear that I have of the future, I don't really deal with that anymore because I realize that what you're inviting me to do is something that I can do for, you know, 10, 20 30 years from yeah, now. So it's great. Absolutely. It's great. Yeah. And I get, my son's got his own set of dumbbells and every once nice. in a while he'll do it, you know, but I mean, he already looks ripped because he's 17 years old. He can eat a yeah. bag of Oreos and look amazing. Uh, but I do know that I'm setting an example for him. One of the things that he said, he's a reader and he must've been six or seven years old. And he was always kind of reading uh, stuff ahead of other kids and his vocabulary was good. And he came to me one day and he said, dad, when you get old, I want you to be spry. <laughs> and I got such a kick out of that, but there was something that God used that comment for in me to say, you can do this, but what does that bring up in you? There was fear that I couldn't. There was the question, what is that going to look like? How, how am I going to pull that off? Especially knowing that I came from a family that didn't value that. So I kind of felt like I was going to have to be a salmon that turned around and started swimming upstream. Yeah. I was going to have to do something very differently than had been passed on to me. And um, I think he's happy. You know, I'm not old, old yet, but I'm 48. I'm out there. I just went and bought a skateboard with him. Nice. He's been skateboarding for a couple of months, but I was like, 
I'm not into the video games thing with him, but I can share this time with him outside. So I've got my elbow pads and I've got my helmet on and I look like the, you know, the old man geek, yeah. but I'm having a great time with him and I'm not afraid to do that. So that's really fun. That's incredible. Yeah. You brought up a, a lot of great points. I think the, the obstacles that people fear is the unknown. Like what does the path look like? Mm -hmm. And I don't have any momentum behind my back. I feel like I'm fighting this resistance. So the, this is why it's essential, whether it's fit father project or something else that works is to follow a system that has it laid out for you. So you can be the one that's um, just executing on the plan versus thinking and executing at the same time, because mm -hmm. like all the best athletes, like Michael Jordan had shooting coaches, like for a good reason, because he can be the athlete mm -hmm. and he can get instruction and you can get into the doing and the process and focus on that versus like needing to figure out the architecture, wearing these two different hats. That's why having a laid out path is, is so important. Um, and the second thing is getting in an environment where you actually have wind at your back instead of wind in your face. Like when you join fit father project and like our brotherhoods, like we're a bunch of salmon swimming up the same stream. Like, it's helpful to feel that forward push and momentum where you feel like you're not at it alone because that's honestly where a lot of where like men, men can hide. We can hide in the shadows um, by ourselves and we rise when we're together. It's kind of how we're hardwired. So um, both those things are, are very important lessons that I hope guys take to heart. Mm -hmm. I think it might be helpful to have another discussion with you sometime in the future, but Absolutely. I think we've really hit on it. What I'm just really hoping for those of you who are listening is that um, there are mind games that are going on inside your head and emotionally, uh, if you're not thinking correctly, it can really do some damaging stuff to you spiritually. It can really hold you back. And as I think about some of the, the patriarchs and the spiritual heroes, as I read the Bible, these are not guys that allowed themselves to sit down and quit uh, executing on the calling that God had on their lives. I can't imagine that David or Abraham or any of these great men of faith uh, were, were robbed of the opportunity to offer the wisdom that God had given them over all of those years because their bodies were just wearing out too quickly and they weren't taking care of them. They, they lived in a very different environment. And unfortunately, many of us have to sit at computers. I sit at computers and it, you know, mentally, emotionally is very, very taxing on me. And for me to get the endorphin boost to go out to my garage, to change my clothes, to allow somebody else like, like, like uh, Anthony, uh, you know, Balducci, sorry, Dr. Balduzzi to, to tell me, look, this is all you need to do to listen to a podcast, to take a break. And I come back in and I'm ready to work again. Mm -hmm. I am like, I, I am ready. I feel real good about what I do. Um, you know, for those of you who are familiar with the side of the being sons program that has to do with adventures, uh, I, I, I love to rock, to rock, rock climb. And when I'm doing first tracks with fathers and sons, one of my favorite things to do is to play capture the flag. And there's just a lot of 48 year olds that don't do it, mm -hmm. you know, and I wish they were because it's so much fun mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that. And I, I want to see myself doing this for years to come. So guys, just to, you've heard a little bit about the impact that it's had on me, but um, I just started doing, uh, Dr. Balduzzi, what you recommended. Just start, started taking a little two-degree shifts in my diet, two-degree shifts in my sleeping, two-degree shifts in my exercise program. Uh, I had been running because it's just a good thing for me mentally. God mm -hmm. tends to meet me when, when I'm running. A lot of people absolutely hate running, so, so to do dumbbells may be great for them. But I lost 17 pounds, yeah. and I started looking better in two months with really minimal effort. I actually started enjoying breakfast and eating it regularly. Um, <clears throat> I began experiencing less aches and pains when I was just doing the running by itself. I was experiencing aches and pains in the days in between when I started supplementing that with dumbbell workouts, which started out taking 45 minutes, then got down to 30 minutes. 
uh, because of the stretchings, stretching that you recommended, because that the exercises will full body, I began feeling stronger. Running actually began to be more fun for me. Yeah. Instead of the pounding on the body, I just felt better equipped to do that. More muscle mass, clearly. I mean, I had people constantly commenting last summer, "Are you? You look really different. What are you doing?" And so I got to start pointing people to you and just to the really simple thirty-minute exercises. I looked in the mirror and I started realizing I haven't felt this good about how I look my entire life. Looking back at college, post-college, lots of times we think that that's when we looked and felt the best. Uh, Maybe it was if we had a good exercise regimen at the time, but I actually feel better physically about how I am now at 48 than I ever have in my life. I would never have thought that definitely stronger. I've, li- I've gone up in weights from starting with 20s up to, to 30s for my nice. dumbbells. And, and that feels great. And I'm only five foot eight and a half. I'm not a big guy. So I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to do, but I'll keep, keep doing that. Um, I'm able to keep up with my kids. My son's been playing ultimate Frisbee. And so I'll go out there on the field with him with a bunch of other high schoolers and I can hang with nice. them. You know, which is just so much joy for me. And I think my my son gets some enjoyment out of that. I'm still eating pizza, which I love. I'm still eating ice cream with my family occasionally. Uh, I don't fear the future as much. I'm confident that this is sustainable. Like I said, I'm so thankful that my kids are years from now going to be able to see and remember me working out in the garage and say, I can do it. If my father started late in his 40s, then it's not too late, um, especially as given as, as bad eating habits, as poor as the food is today, to be able to say to my kids, it's not going to be too late. You're probably going to make some mistakes health-wise, but you can always uh, do what I did and, and start eating better. Um, and I, and I realized that my career, which requires me to be physically active, like there's not the fear that I'm not going to be able to do that, uh, for, for years to come. So, um, thank you for that. I just, I'm really excited to have you as a resource. I'm really thankful for this. And I, and I, uh, I just want to encourage you guys to go and spend some time listening to, to Dr. Balduzzi, look at his program. It makes sense. Literally pray about it as you go onto the website, as you're listening to these, God, what are you saying to me? And I think that what you'll experience is a level and a measure of hope arise in you uh, because God is really concerned about your health. He's really concerned about your body. And I think that you're, I'm confident that as you begin hearing him and confidently walking in the direction of taking care of this temple that he's given you, you're going to find that spiritually you're going to feel more connected to him and you're going to feel um, more emotionally connected to the people around you that you love. It's just an overall great thing. So I wouldn't have you on this program, Dr. Balduzzi. Uh, In fact, I'm actually shocked that I'm talking to a fitness guy about this. And I'm so (laughs) thankful that you were willing to be vulnerable and authentic about your faith. Cause I know that that's something that, gosh, you could have a great business, but the moment you open your mouth and you start talking about Jesus and faith, you know, you're taking a risk. Um, And so I think that you've handled that really well at Easter time. I really appreciated the, uh, the email that you sent out about, uh, about the resurrection. I was just so deeply encouraged. You're very thoughtful. And, um, and a great encouragement. So thanks, Jay. I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you. Where, where can these men go to find out more from you? And what do you have available to them that, that may be just free to just yeah. try it out? Fitfatherproject.com or just Google Fit Father Project, Yahoo, search Fit Father Project. You'll find our main website. Okay. We have a free meal plan and a free workout. A lot of the stuff we actually discussed, it'd be a great place to start. Um, and if you're a guy who really wants to dive into a lot of free videos, our YouTube channel is amazing. We have like mm-hmm. literally hundreds yes. of videos on our YouTube channel, yes. um, free workouts, you know, free meal plans. And on our main website, if you are interested in our full Fit Father 30X program that you use, Jay, and mm-hmm. 20,000 other guys use, that's available for purchase as well. Um, and a lot of our guys start with the free stuff too. So all that's available. Um, it's easy to find. So Fit Father Project in YouTube or Google and you'll find us. Great. That's, that's wonderful. All right. 
So Dr. Balduzzi, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate thank it. You, Jay. Hey, well done. I uh, appreciate not only physically what you're offering in fathering us, but uh, you're obviously a, a good businessman. You've surrounded yourself with a customer service team that has served me on multiple occasions when I started feeling aches and pains because my body wasn't used to doing something that you were inviting me to do. They gave me immediately alternative plans. Don't do this, do this instead. There you were, they sent me a link to your face saying, hey, no problem, here's hope, here's what to try, and boom, it just walked me right through it, and now I'm back. Uh, so anyway, okay. you've, got a, you've got a great team, you've got a great business, and um, it's fun watching you. So thank Thanks, you very Jay. much. I appreciate right. you. Have All a right. great day, my friend. Take care. Thank you.